There are more than 25,000 vehicle collisions with wildlife in Canada every year. Additionally, there's 14 million birds that are killed by vehicles annually. But imagine a world where animals can safely cross highways, reducing these collisions by more than 80%. That world exists in Banff National Park in Alberta, Canada. As habitat fragmentation threatens countless species, innovative solutions like wildlife connectivity corridors are crucial for protecting the animals we cherish. Get ready to explore one of the most remarkable examples of these life-saving structures in this video. Habitat fragmentation occurs when natural habitats are divided into smaller, isolated patches by human development, such as roads, buildings, and agricultural land. This can have devastating effects on wildlife, making it difficult for them to find food, mates, and shelter. It also increases their exposure to predators and other threats. Connectivity corridors are strips of natural habitat that connect larger patches of habitat, allowing wildlife to move safely between them. These corridors can take many forms, such as overpasses, underpasses, and even simple vegetated strips along waterways. By providing safe passage for wildlife, connectivity corridors can help to reduce the negative impacts of habitat fragmentation. One of the best examples of successful connectivity corridors can be found in Banff National Park in Canada. There are millions of visitors every year who drive through Banff National Park, and the Trans-Canada Highway cuts right through. Fortunately for the wildlife here, they've built these wilderness overpasses, some of the very first in the world, that allow animals to cross safely to the other side. The park is home to a wide variety of wildlife, including grizzly bears, wolves, and elk. However, the Trans-Canada Highway, which runs directly through the park, has been a major barrier to wildlife movement. It can have important impacts on the reproductive success because females aren't being able to access important spring habitat, uh, because they're not crossing the highway. So it's, it's, it's important that, that we maintain these movements and we maintain this access to the important biological resources throughout the year. And wildlife crossing structures do that. To address this issue, Parks Canada has constructed a series of wildlife crossings along the highway, with a total of 44 wildlife crossing structures, six overpasses and 38 underpasses, and 82 kilometers of highway fencing, Banff National Park has the most wildlife crossing structures and highway enclosure fencing in a single location on the planet. You would have no idea that this is an overpass. Well, it's grown in really well since these were built in 1996. <laughs> Check it out. So this is the highway. This is the Trans-Canada Highway, highway number one. So this is a clear-cut wildlife path. The animals have figured it out. They've pushed all the plants aside and there is a clear path right over the overpass to the other side of the Rockies and the wildlife crossings are designed to connect vital habitats and allow the safe movement of animals across the busy highway. Since 1996, continuous research and monitoring of the wildlife crossing structures has contributed to improvements of subsequent phases of the Trans-Canada Highway twinning project. Well, here in, on the Trans-Canada Highway in Banff National Park, there were, were on average more than 100 elk vehicle collisions per year before the fencing and the wildlife crossing structures and now it's down to less than a half dozen. Uh, so these are huge reductions by having these mitigation measures in place that are improving motorist safety, they're saving lives, and also in a protected area like Banff National Park it's important because the objective of this national park is to protect wildlife. Wildlife use underpasses and overpasses. However, when given a choice, each species seems to have distinct preferences. Grizzly bears, wolves, elk, moose, and deer prefer crossing structures that are high, wide, and short in length, depending on the species. Black bears and cougars tend to prefer long, low, and narrow underpasses. Interestingly, the use of crossing structures by wildlife is changing over time. As wildlife populations fluctuate, the number of occasions individuals of a particular species use the crossings also seems to rise and fall. Some animals need time to adapt to new structures on the landscape. For example, overpass use gradually increased for grizzly bears, cougars, and wolves over the first five years of monitoring. So the results have been impressive. Wildlife vehicle collisions have dropped by more than 80% since the fencing and crossing structures were first constructed. In 2012, 
11 species of large mammals were recorded using the wildlife crossings more than 150,000 times since 1996, including grizzly and black bears, wolves, coyotes, cougars, moose, elk, deer, sheep, wolverine, and lynx. In 2012, a male grizzly was recorded crossing the structures 66 times in one summer. By crossing the highway, the bear's habitat expanded to include potential mates on the other side of the road, which decreases the likelihood of inbreeding. So DNA-based research is also exploring how crossings benefit species, such as bears and wolverines. DNA hair samples are collected using barbed wire strung at crossings or strategically placed hair snagging sites on the broader landscape. Well, the show is that by having these overpasses and underpasses in place, we've restored genetic connectivity across the highway here in Banff National Park. Parks Canada is a world leader in the use of innovative highway wildlife mitigations. Based on sound science in collaboration with leading experts and organizations, in the field of road ecology. Over the years, information about where different species are most likely to cross the highway has been collected using radio telemetry, monitoring, animal tracks in the snow, wildlife observations, and roadkill hotspots. This data is used to build wildlife movement models using mapping software, which predicts the most likely locations for wildlife travel across the Trans-Canada Highway based on topography and habitat data for five species, black and grizzly bears, wolves, elk, and moose. These models help identify locations for future wildlife crossing structures. So the success of Banff's wildlife crossings highlights the importance of connectivity corridors for wildlife conservation. By allowing animals to move safely between habitats, these corridors can help to maintain genetic diversity, reduce mortality, and support the long-term survival of species. Roadkill has an immediate and direct effect on a population, easily seen within one or two animal generations. On the other hand, complete barrier effects, like not being able to cross an obstacle like a highway, can take several generations to develop within a population. Barrier effects on a grizzly bear population may take as long as 50 years to measure and can have serious repercussions on genetic diversity and overall health. As human development continues to fragment natural landscapes, the need for connectivity corridors has never been greater than it is today. You can help to support the development of connectivity corridors in your local area. For example, if there's a busy road near you in a natural area of your community, you could advocate for the installation of wildlife underpasses or overpasses to help animals cross safely. You can also contact your local conservation organizations to learn more about ongoing projects and how you can get involved. Additionally, you can support initiatives that prioritize wildlife conservation and habitat connectivity when planning new development projects. Connectivity corridors are a vital tool for wildlife conservation in an increasingly fragmented world. By providing safe passage for animals, these corridors can help to maintain biodiversity and support the long-term survival of species. The success of Banff's wildlife crossings shows that with careful planning and design, connectivity corridors can make a real difference for wildlife. Together, we can work to build a more connected and resilient future for all species. And if you wanna learn more about Banff's connectivity corridors, check out the description for more information. And I'll see you all in the next one.